been a week of gender buzz, huh? One of my friends in Joy tells me that you most definitely always have a woman in the studio. Deliberate dynamic. But for those of us who are gender friendly, we will sing our own song. And definitely with regard to what we are talking about, she knows her song. So I am talking today about hmm, lupus, a chronic systemic uh, disorder. And I've got with me Dr. Jifa, the rheumatologist with the Kolibu Teaching Hospital here in the studio. Anytime we talk about some of these things and I read and read and I hear that, well, there is currently no cure, I get worried. So I always look for the specialists to bring them into the studio to talk about it. Lupus. Reading about some of the celebrities that have it. Lady Gaga, Nick Cannon, Selena Gomez. Seal, if you notice the scars on his face, it's a form of lupus. If you have any questions, concerns, experiences, Share with us WhatsApp 0244340437. I'm in the studio with Dr. Jifa Day. Doc, you're welcome. Thank you very much for having me again. We're having you again, man. I, I was I, I was doing my women's stuff before I started. <laughs> uh, have you been caught up in the buzz? Oh uh, well, we are opening our own doors. <laughs> <laughs> opening your own doors. Okay, that's a that's a cool way to put it. Um, but let's come to the subject lupus. And autoimmune, uh, should I say, conditions. In February, we had you and we spoke about rheumatoid arthritis. Yes. Right. Is there a link? Um, both of them are autoimmune diseases. Mm -hmm. um, so Lupus Awareness Month was just ended in, in May, actually. Okay. Um, so both of them are what you call chronic systemic autoimmune diseases. Systemic okay. meaning that it can affect the whole body. Okay. And autoimmune meaning the immune system attacking itself. Okay. So whatever it, the immune system decides it's abnormal mm -hmm. through that state of confusion, it can go and attack. Okay. And being systemic, all organs can be affected. Right. So there's several, there's a range of conditions in which your 
in which your your immune system can go gaga if i can use yes. that go crazy and start attacking the body, the body itself. itself um if just to recap for your listeners mm-hmm. uh, remember for autoimmune disease we have what's called a localized type okay where the immune system in a state of confusion um would attack a single organ mm-hmm. like diabetes um, thyroid disorders um, mm-hmm. multiple sclerosis where it's affecting just the nerves um, diabetes, the, um, the 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 pancreas, okay. which produces insulin. The systemic types, however, the immune system is not selective; it attacks any organ at all. Mm. And so, based on the organs that is affecting and the certain um, antibody types or lab types, then you can classify into the various type of um, systemic autoimmune disorders. Okay. Then, yeah. All right. So now we can zoom in specifically on to lupus. lupus. Yes. Right. What is it? So lupus is an autoimmune condition which predominantly affects women um, okay. of childbearing age, mm. uh, usually between the ages of 15 to about 40 years. Okay. And it's systemic, meaning that it can affect most of the um, organs in the body. We call it a connective tissue disease because it tends to, like certain um, organs that have, when we say connective tissue, it's uh, kind of the proteins that bind certain um, organs in the body. So okay. wherever you find those proteins, that means the immune system is going to attack that mm. part of the body. Okay. And it can affect anything from the top of your head to the soles of your feet. So the right. eyes, the skin, the bones, the heart, the lungs, the kidneys, the brain, anything that has the connective tissue or that particular target for the immune system can be affected. Okay. So, so this is more common in women. Yes. Why is that so? We think it's got something to do with hormones, um, mm. the hormone estrogen that makes women um, women. Because if you look at the age groups, uh, in the very young, mm-hmm. the age, the ratio between women and men is almost about the same. Okay. And then when you get to the very elderly as well, the ratio is almost about the same. But when you get to the childbearing age, okay, where the hormone differentiation is really at its peak, that is when you see the vast difference. Mm. So then the difference is about 9 is to 1 in some places. It can go up to about 15 is to 1 females to men. But when you take the other extremes, it's almost about equal men to men to women or women to men. Okay. It's, it's about so you may have some connection or some... Connection link. with, with hormones. With yes. hormones. But okay. like all autoimmune diseases, <clears throat> we know there is... Um, sorry. There's a genetic background. Okay. So... Um, you have certain genetic uh, features that make you predisposed to having your immune system being overactive. Mm. Then an environmental trigger comes to stimulate the immune system, then it starts misbehaving. Okay. So in lupus, we know that the hormone estrogen definitely um, acts like that because of the gender balance that um, has been seen. Mm-hmm. Then certain things can also sure. come and trigger it um, as usual. Infections can trigger it. Stress can trigger it. Sunlight. Mm. It's one of the triggers for lupus. Okay. Um, uh, the abundance of it in, in our environment is, is really um, something that you don't even know how to um, tell patients what to do about it. There, there are some people who think that um, infections also trigger it or modulate it. The theory being that um, in the past, people thought lupus wasn't common in Africa. Okay. And they thought the reason why was because we were protected by malaria and all the parasitic infections that we right. get. So when you move to the more developed countries where you didn't have this protection from being exposed mm-hmm. to all these germs, then you start developing, which was actually what they call the lupus gradient, that people were not in, in Africa were not getting it. And okay. when they move to the Americas, the Europe, then they start to demonstrate. So for, for once, we have some form of African mm-hmm. benefit. Unfortunately, it immunity. seems that we have lost that okay. benefit there because... Definitely, we are seeing a lot, lot, lot more cases of lupus in Africa now. Okay, right. 15 minutes past year of two on Joy 99.7 FM. My guest in the studio is a rheumatologist, uh, Dr. Jifa Day of the Kolebu Teaching Hospital. Uh, we're looking at uh, one of the autoimmune conditions, a condition uh, in which uh, your immune system starts to attack your own mm-hmm. body, right? And this one is systemic, so it can affect any part, any system of your body. Currently, there is no known cure, so we need to know how to uh, indeed pick it up, diagnose it conclusively, and then understand the treatment and management, and then we'll start looking at living with lupus. There are people living with lupus as I speak, and uh, uh, many many other, uh, should I say, variations of autoimmune conditions. So if you have any questions, concerns, you're living with it, or you're living with somebody who has it, do 
get in touch with us. WhatsApp is 244 And shortly, we'll activate the phone lines as well. We are live on Facebook and YouTube. This is Ultimate Health on Joy. So, Doc, coming back, um, can children get this? Yes. Children can get... The youngest person I have diagnosed personally was two years old. Was two them, years? Two years old. Wow. A two-year-old boy, just about a few months ago. Okay. Yeah. And I want you to also emphasize, men can get lupus. Men can get it as well. Do rare. Do rare, uh, men can get it as well. Okay. And um, maybe because a lot of people don't tend to suspect it in men, mm -hmm. when we do diagnose the men, they tend to have more severe disease. So we need to be on the alert as right. well in men. Because okay. they usually will come at the beginning, they tend to come with more severe kidney involvement, mm. um, heart involvement as well. Okay. Yeah. Right. So I guess the next step is really to understand, well, how do you know if you have lupus? Are there telltale signs and symptoms? And then is there a conclusive diagnostic mm -hmm. process? How do you tell whether you have lupus? Like most autoimmune diseases, the symptoms may depend on which organ is affecting. Okay. There are certain general symptoms that you may um, find in, in patients there. But that said, no two patients are alike. Right. Every patient is different. Now, for most autoimmune diseases, fatigue is a very significant feature. People okay. will tell you, I sleep and I wake up and I don't feel like I've rested. Somebody. So when you, when you doctors say fatigue, sometimes uh, how do we pin it down? Is it that you get tired or you're tired all the time? Or you what are is resting it? and you don't feel like you have rested. So right. someone will tell you, I've slept for 12 hours and I've woken up and I still feel like I haven't rested. Right. My patients always have very interesting ways of describing it. One person said, I feel like some witch has beaten me throughout the night. Even okay. though I've slept and woken up, I've been run over by a bus. So you wake up and you are so tired. You do the least thing and then you are tired. Okay. If you overexert yourself, you break down for about a few days before you get your okay. energy back. So that kind of fatigue is what I'm talking about. So fatigue about. is a cardinal... It's one of the features right. that tend to be. Okay. Joint pains, um, usually in the small joints of the hands and the feet. It mm. may come with swelling or stiffness. If it's persistent for a while, then that might be a feature as well. Okay. One of the features we've noticed as well is, is fever. That mm -hmm. is why a lot of them will tell you I've been treated for malaria, um, typhoid several times, and I have not. Been, they don't find it, but they keep treating me for that. Okay. So a persistent fever should alert you. Unexplained weight loss okay. should ex uh, should also. And then sweating a lot in the night. When it's cold, everybody's feeling cold. You are sweating. Mm. When it's coming with fever, night sweats. Night sweats is one of the symptoms that we tend to points to the systemic nature or that something is happening internally. Okay. It's one Look, of the things we look at. If I can just take you back to the symptom where mm -hmm. you mentioned fever. Yes. For a lot of Ghanaians and a lot of our listeners, yes. when we say fever, it is <laughs> malaria. Yes. Right. So can you explain and pin it down? When we say fever as a when symptom, we mean fever, we what do you mean, mean? A high temperature. A high temperature. You feel hot. Okay. That is what we mean. That is what a fever is. That is what a fever is. Right. Not Nothing else. So malaria is a condition in which you may yeah. have high temperature. Exactly. Right. As a feature or a symptom. Yes, please. Okay. <laughs> but for a lot of people, when you say fever... That means that you are feeling unwell. It can mean chills to them. It can okay. mean feeling like you have... It means so many things to them when okay. you say a fever. So, right. But when we say fever, I mean a high temperature. Okay. Any other okay. symptom for lupus? So, um... For lupus, then we are narrowing down. People mm. will tend to have recurrent sores in the mouth. We call them oral ulcers, and right. sometimes in the nose. Sores in your mouth sores and your nose. Sores in the mouth and the nose that tends to go and keep coming. Okay. And you haven't eaten anything hot, then you notice some sores in your Do mouth. Do they heal? They or? heal. Okay. They and can but, heal, but, but it, it can be very severe and persistent for some people. Okay. Then you have hair loss, which is also one of the features that tends to occur. Your hair just keeps falling off, especially for the ladies. Mm -hmm. You haven't done much. You've braided your hair, but your hair is coming out in huge clumps. You should be worried then. Loss of hair. Loss of hair. Right. And the skin rash. Mm. We have a rash we call the butterfly rash, mm -hmm. where the rash appears over the cheeks mm -hmm. and over the, the bridge of the nose. There. Mm. In a Caucasian person, it might be really visible and clear. So you actually look like a butterfly. Right. Um, a butterfly. But in a dark-skinned person, it might be a bit difficult to spot. But you can see if it is if it's a scarring type of the rash, then it might be more easy to descend there. Okay. So you're looking out for that rash as well. But they have uh, multiple different types of, of rashes that can appear, uh, appear in lupus. Mm. Okay. okay. We right. have acute types, subacute types. We have discoid types where... Mm. The rash is so fluid that it causes scarring of the skin. Right. That's that what has, seal had. Exactly. The discoid. The discoid type. Lupus. Of, exactly. Right. So. Okay. 
And with so these rashes, are they just facial rashes or no. all over your body? So it can occur on the scalp, it can okay. Occur, occur on the face, but it can occur on the body, the hands, mm. it can occur anywhere. Okay. And else, if some of them are what we call photosensitive. So which is one of the features you look out Reactive to, to sunlight. Exactly. You go out in the sun and then you notice that you break out in the rise. That's a photosensitivity. That is, might be a, a feature or a sign that you actually have. Okay. Lupus as well. Right. If you've just joined us, 22 minutes past the hour of 2 on Joy 99.7 FM. The program is Ultimate Health, your ultimate guide to healthy living. We're discussing lupus, uh, a systemic chronic autoimmune disease, disorder. Uh, am I right in saying disorder or disease? Disorder. Well, some well, people prefer to say okay. disorder. Yes. Right. So where your body's, uh, should I say, protective immune system is attacking it's itself. Okay. And I have in the studio with me a rheumatologist, Dr. Jifa Day. She's with the Kolebu Teaching Hospital. Uh, I've got this from Peter Amponsa who says, any features and relationship with sickle cell? Not really. A lot of people, because of the word rheumatism, seem to relates okay. joints joint pain with right. other rheumatological disorders there but they are really very different, different diseases okay. right we'll be doing sickle cell in two weeks time eh? and uh, i've got some good news for those of you who might need to do some uh, uh, electrophoresis and some of the lab tests eh? a good relationship from uh, or with uh, between uh, mds and uh, sickle strong warriors i'll give that out in a sec Amofa Edu Jemfi says, I'm di- I've been diagnosed with lupus for about six months and it's very terrible. I'm praying that the living God will heal me instantly. Uh, is it that bad? Six months, uh, he, he's... Like we said, it's, it's, it varies. Okay. okay. We talked about some of the general symptoms there. Mm. But if you are narrowing down to specifically um, the systemic type, mm. it can affect the kidneys, it can affect the heart, Joy. it can affect the lungs. It can affect the brain. Okay. We've talked about the joints already as well. So it can be really a devastating disease. You right. can within six months somebody can end up on dialysis because Because of is, lupus. Because of lupus, because it's really attacked the kidneys and if it's not treated immediately a person would end up with end stage or chronic kidney disease and end up on dialysis. Right. So in that so, instance, Doc, though we, we we're coming to diagnosis, mm-hmm. is that person suffering from a renal or a kidney disease or is a kidney disease secondary to suffering from a kidney disease secondary to lupus caused by the lupus caused, caused by the lupus yes so they will still need to be treated for the lupus they will still need to be and treated the kidney and condition. still go on, on to dialysis wow. yes wow so the same thing it can when it affects the brain the symptoms can range from headaches depression mm-hmm. strokes in young people mm-hmm. seizures some people may come with weakness, paralysis, right. because of inflammation of the spinal cord. And and the symptoms in, in the heart, you can end up with heart failure. Right. You can end up with what's called endocarditis, where the autoimmune system destroys the heart valves and the heart is not able to pump properly. Sometimes the inflammation around the heart leads to accumulation of fluid around the heart, and so the heart is not able to pump. And if you don't take that fluid out, the person will mm. get breathless. Wow. The lungs too can do the same fluid accumulation, or it can cause... The lungs to scar up and it's not able to expand as well as it should be. We call it mm. fibrosis, which is also quite devastating because you are not able to reverse it. Okay. Once your lungs are not able to beat or work properly, then it ends up affecting the heart and then you end up so with heart So essentially, failure. your body is killing itself. That is the, the word. Your body is killing itself. It's killing itself because it thinks that its own self is following, which right. is the basis of all autoimmune diseases. Right. Wow. I've got this from Dede in uh, Maryland. Some of the symptoms Doc mentioned applies to arthritis and aging as well. So how can it be narrowed down to pinpoint lupus? Dede, we're coming to diagnostic uh, specifics. Huh? How a doctor, and indeed I'll be asking uh, Dr. Day whether this ne- requires specialist, uh, uh, should I say, diagnosis. How do we pin down lupus? How do we diagnose it? Um, if you look at it medically, we have what we call our diagnostic or classification criteria. Okay. Where you are looking for certain signs and symptoms and putting it together, if it fits a certain pattern, mm-hmm. plus the lab features, then you make a diagnosis of lupus. Okay. We call it our ACR criteria or another college criteria. Right. So the symptoms are the things that I mentioned earlier. Mm-hmm. The peculiar, the male rash, the discoid rash, yeah, there's photosensitivity, right. the sores in the mouth, the nasal ulcer, the joint pains in certain joints there. So okay. they mentioned arthritis. Right. 
Arthritis in old people tends to affect the big joints and knees, but okay. in lupus, we are looking more at arthritis occurring in the hands and the feet. You don't okay. expect a young person to have arthritis occurring in the hands and the feet at that age. Mm-hmm. So that should always raise a, mm. a red flag for you. Okay. Then we are looking at all the other organ involvement, the lungs, the blood. It can affect the various components of the blood as well. So you get persistent anemia, which is one of the common features that uh, women will present with. Uh, okay. Low platelets, so that's one of the blood components that helps you to clot. If it's affected, then you keep on bleeding. Mm. Okay, so that can be affected as well. And we talked okay. about the various syndromes that can occur in the brain as well. Right. So if you get someone having four of these features, right. we take about 11 of them. If right. you have about four of them, then we are going to look at what we call the lab features. We call okay. them certain uh, tests. We call the serological tests. Okay. But we are looking at peculiar proteins or antibodies in the blood. Right. Which are common to only lupus patients or other connective tissue diseases. Okay. So if you have those ones in addition to some of those clinical features, right. then we'll be able to make the diagnosis okay. of lupus. So Peter from McCarthy Hill, you just said that how do you detect you have this problem from Peter and McCarthy Hill? Mm-hmm. So you're looking at this presentation of symptoms yes. and then certain telltale signs and indicators in your blood exactly right yes. to be able to, to say that this is lupus yes. you mentioned earlier that seal had the discoid right uh, type of lupus so mm-hmm. we have about four different categories of of of, uh, of lupus mm. so we have what you call the discoid type where it's really affecting only the skin so seal has that type it's not affecting his internal organs it's okay. mainly attacking the skin okay so that's the discoid lupus. Then we have the neonatal type, where it affects kids, right. or newborn babies. Right. They actually don't have lupus. It will clear away in some months unless it's affected the heart. But okay. they are, it ha- happens in, in babies born to women who have an autoimmune disease or lupus. Okay. And the antibodies cross over to the baby. So the baby's immune system reacts. So they may get a rash. They may look like they have the disease. Okay. But that will clear away with time there. Mm-hmm. Then we have what we call the drug-induced. There are certain medications that can give you signs and symptoms of lupus. Okay. And if you are able to identify with all the drugs, then luckily some of those features will disappear. So they can present with a lot of the symptoms we talked about for the systemic type already. Right. Then we have the systemic type, where is the disease entity itself affecting all the multiple organs there. Okay. And these can occur alone or with other autoimmune conditions together. Okay. As well. Wow. So if it was caused or triggered by a drug, yes. the likelihood is that this is reversible. That's, yes. Right. can be reversible when you withdraw the... But it's still drug. diagnosed as lupus. It's still diagnosed as lupus. So okay. if, if you are able to suspect and you withdraw it, there mm-hmm. are certain antibodies that are also peculiar to that type. Okay. So if you find them that you know it's drug-induced and you're able to withdraw the drug, then they will okay. tend to recover. Right. Now, Doc, these, these sound like very... <laughs> devastating symptoms yes. definitely the person's quality of life will be, will affected. be affected but i mentioned earlier uh maybe as a result of my reading that i, I mean i've heard and i've read that there is no known cure so is this thing something that if you get it or you, you acquire it mm-hmm. if i can use that phrase is going to progressively get worse or is or can i just bluntly say is there a cure there's no cure for lupus. It's a chronic condition like diabetes or hypertension. We manage it. You and we, manage. We manage it. And right. we can manage it quite effectively. Mm. In the past, when you get lupus, it was a death sentence. I'm sure a lot of people, when you ask them about lupus, tell, oh, I knew somebody who died. We are hoping that that narrative changes in, okay. Af- in, Ka- in, in Ghana soon. Because in other parts of the world, in the last um, 10 years or the past, 10, when you had lupus, your chances of dying within five years was about 95%. Wow. But currently, with good treatment, your chances of living a normal life, if you are diagnosed early without your organs being damaged, mm-hmm. is about 95%. Wow. So, within that 10 years, there's been quite a good amount of, of, of progress made. In its management, okay. the key is being diagnosed early and managed properly. Right. So, who should you be seeing if you suspect, you know, or you are experiencing some of the symptoms yes, we just described? Um, yes. Should you be seeing a specialist? Should you be seeing a rheumatologist? Who yes. should you so be? So, ideally, you should see a rheumatologist in the long term there to okay. make sure your treatment is well coordinated. Right. We are we are very few here, so we also depend on. And I've captured one in, <laughs> in the studio, so. The intern, the specialist or internist. Okay. To be able to make a diagnosis there, based on the symptoms, they'll be able to recognize it and at least make a diagnosis and refer you on to the rheumatologist to be able to coordinate and mm. manage your care properly. Okay. 
Right. So, but if, yeah, go ahead. I should say that lupus, as we talked about, we talked about loss of organs being affected. There. Mm-hmm. It is not a disease entity that one person manages. Right. You are going to end up seeing lots of different Several specials. specialists. Yes, that's why you need someone who... That signals or flags for me a lot of stress. It is a lot grabbing of stress. a specialist to yourself, exactly. and right, then, on a regular basis in this country in which we live in it, as somebody enough. will say, it's yeah. tough. It is tough. And they have different schedules, they are in different places, exactly. and you're, you're, you're experiencing this yeah. very devastating to, you condition. You have to see a dermatologist, you have to see a kidney doctor, a nephrologist, oh you may have to see a cardiologist. It can be difficult. Well, coordinating that is as bad as the condition we are describing, folks. It's 32 minutes past the hour of two on Joy 99.7 FM. We're talking about lupus uh, with Dr. Jifa Day, a uh, rheumatologist. Pakwesi uh, Isuyama, right? Thompson says, Dr. Day is one amazing woman and doing a lot to enlighten people on how to alleviate and live with lupus. Kudos and uh, soldier on. God bless you. Thank you, Your fans, eh? Parkwesi. Hmm. Parkwesi, me, you didn't say anything about me. Eh? I'll get you. <laughs> Don't worry. I'm, I'm, I'm not jealous. I know, I know why you say that. And I know many people who are being uh, supported and helped by the likes of Dr. Day. And that's why we chose to, uh, should I say, highlight this topic today. If you have any questions, concerns, experiences, please share with us. Especially your battle living with it and coordinating this uh, whole, let me call it, symphony orchestra of mm-hmm. specialists and medical appointments and loads of medications that you have to take. We haven't talked about the medication or the treatment or management yet, but share with us if you are in that situation or it may be one of the other uh, autoimmune conditions. There, This morning, a friend of mine shared that she had a niece who was diagnosed with Stills disease, Stills disease, and later it was, uh, should I say, changed or found to be lupus Sadly, they lost her a couple of months ago. I'll be asking Doc the distinctions and the differences. Uh, this is still Ultimate Health on Joy 99.7 FM. So, Doc, uh, diagnosis we've talked about, mm-hmm. it's progressive or it can so, be. Um, lupus is, is, or a lot of autoimmune diseases, is not a progressive disease per se. Mm. That is one of the things that makes it difficult and very psychologically challenging for people who have it. Okay. We mentioned earlier that no two patients are the same. Someone okay. will come as diagnosis with kidney involvement. You mm-hmm. mentioned celebrities. Mm-hmm. Nick Cannon was diagnosed with kidney involvement right. straight away. He used to host uh, America's Got Talent, yes. right? Yes, exactly. So he came with kidney disease. Somebody would... There's a video where he says, I've got lupus, lupus hasn't got me. Yes, you have to be... Positive strong ambassadors. Strong, exactly. Right. So there are lots of people. Tony Braxton has lupus as yep. well. Um, so Selena, Selena Gomez has kidney involvement, had to have a kidney transplant. Right. I have it on authority that Michael Jackson has lupus, had lupus as well. Really? So all the, the um, what's the name, it's mm. LIGO and things. Uh, the story was actually true. Okay. To a certain degree. Wow. So what he chose to do with it, that's a different um, mm. issue altogether. But oh. it's, it's, it's quite um, devastating. But... It's, it's a spectrum. Okay. Some people have very severe disease. Some people might have milder disease. And it's not like you start with one and then you move progressively towards kidney disease. Okay. So it's not like you have, it's progressive. It's right. an unexpected thing. It's, it remits, it relapses, mm. it behaves in its own way. Okay. Unless you are gaining control over the immune system. Okay. Got this again from Dede in Maryland. Dede, thanks. I had a cousin who died of vasculitis some years ago. <laughs> Is it related to lupus? Yes and no. So vasculitis can be, vasculitis is inflammation of the blood vessels. It is an autoimmune condition as well. Okay. It can occur on its own as a disease entity, Mm -hmm. the different types of vasculitis, but it can also occur in very severe lupus as well. So yes, it is also related to lupus, but it can be a separate diagnosis on its own unrelated to lupus. Okay. Dede is a separate diagnosis on her own. <laughs> Some of her questions. <laughs> but always glad, always glad to have her tuned in all the way in Maryland. If you're tuned in, tell a friend to tell a friend. This is Ultimate Health on Joy 99.7 FM with me, Norte by Nature. I'm with Dr. Jifa Day, a rheumatologist. We're talking about lupus. And uh, if you have any questions, con- uh, experiences to share, WhatsApp is 0244-340-437. We're live on Facebook and YouTube, and shortly we'll activate the phone lines as well. Um, let's look at management. 
Or is there something down uh, upstream that we haven't looked at? We've looked at diagnosis, signs and symptoms, <laughs> the prevalence. How serious is it in Ghana? Let me just... We don't have community-based data okay. um, about lupus there. Um, even in worldwide, the prevalence is, is difficult to actually quantify. Okay. In America, we know over 5 million people live with lupus. Okay. In Ghana, what we have is hospital-based data, right. looking at the admissions mm -hmm. over a period of time there. And lupus found, formed about 5.28% of patients who were admitted okay. into the hospital. Right. And this, when you compare it in, to data that was obtained in the 80s or 90s, mm -hmm. where lupus formed about 0.8 or so of admissions, you can see the big right. gap there. And we think that if we do that audit again mm -hmm. now, and this is data that was done in 2010, if you do that now, it will be probably more because we can see the number of cases that we are seeing now. Okay. Every week we get about five new right. cases being... Um, That's frightening, but could it also be because that we are now more specialized and specific in d diagnosing it, distinguishing it that from others? That is one of the thoughts there. Right. But we also think that um, if you look at the general of doctors there, mm. that we had, mm. they were quite good. Uh, right. so, so the we capacity think that hasn't Capacity changed. hasn't changed. But then again, we have more access to diagnostic tools that we didn't have before, okay. right. which helps us to make more precise diagnosis as okay. well. But we think also in general that people are right. getting So, Doc, more. if lupus, from what you say, I mean, even uh, tentatively is on the increase, mm -hmm. What is it? Is it triggers in the environment? Is it lifestyle? What that is, is the suspicion there. And it's not only in Ghana. Worldwide, Okay. generally autoimmune diseases are on ascendancy mm. everywhere in the world there. Okay. It is somebody said presented to me as a disease of the future that we need to be worried about. Goodness. And let me ask this as well. So if a doctor is treating somebody for kidney disease mm -hmm. or any other system or organ related condition would they routinely screen and check if it could be caused by or related to lupus or some autoimmune process so, yes depending on the age mm -hmm. of the patient how the patient presented with certain features as well there mm -hmm. so yes if they present with a certain pattern of kidney disease they would look out for lupus so if it's a young person, mm -hmm. if it's a female, mm -hmm. the kidney doctors would always look out for lupus. Okay. So we get some referrals directly from the kidney doctors. Okay. Like that, yes. Right. So would the average doctor in the general system, general pool, be able to identify and diagnose lupus? It, or would they be caught in this uh, trap, I guess, of uh, treating malaria, treating joint pain and other things before uh, finally? Unfortunately... They might be, because even in advanced countries, it okay. takes about four to five years for people to be diagnosed hmm. because of the way it presents. They call it a disease with the multiple faces. Right. It can be tricky. Hmm. Some of the presentations I've seen myself, sometimes I'm amazed as, how, as, to, as to how it presents there. Okay. So it can be a bit tricky. And mm -hmm. so if you are not on the high alert, it's easy for you to miss it. Okay. That's okay. I've seen this lady several times. It's a young female. She shouldn't be getting this. Why hmm. she, does she keep coming? then you would well start um, thinking about it. Okay. That said, I mean, whilst we're educating pay, uh, people or doctors as well, we feel that the diagnostic acumen is improving. Mm. We now have people who are being referred and doctors are picking and doing the tests even before they refer them. Okay. So education is very important in okay. that regard there. All right. Great. I'm going to bring you in now. And uh, yeah, she mentioned connective tissue. Let's connect, right? Uh, 0302. 216541 to get in on ultimate health today we're talking about lupus living with lupus we haven't even got gotten to living with it yet but you're invited to join us let's live uh, jointly uh, in this discussion on lupus with dr jifa day of the um, kolebu teaching hospital i've got something from k mark in london what does he say Hi, I'm eagerly listening to your discussion this afternoon as someone who lost an older sister to lupus some 14 years ago and also has a good friend who has been diagnosed. I'm very interested in this health topic. So this is uh, K-Mark eh, or K-Y in uh, London, in the UK somewhere. He shares that with us. Thanks for listening and share with others. Yeah. Right. So let's come back to, 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 to treatment. treatment. What can be done? So the treatment is mainly aimed at suppressing the immune system so what okay. is happening is the immune system is overworking it's, okay. it's hyperactive and we want to try and modulate its effects there mm -hmm. so with the treatments is with drugs that we call immunosuppressants 
the cardinal one of it is um, steroids okay. or prednisolone. That is one of the first. Right. Th- um, I'm never able to pronounce that. Prednisolone. <laughs> right. <laughs> or steroids. So we use that to try and, and calm the immune system down. Mm-hmm. Then we have other stronger ones that may be directed at certain specific parts of the immune system. Okay. Depending on what is being affected. Mm. So if it's the joints, we have certain drugs that are more targeted at the joints, like okay. methotrexate. Mm. If it's the kidneys, we have certain drugs that may be more targeted at the kidneys, like cyclophosphamide or okay. mycophenolate. So yes, we so have depending what's on what you're depending presenting. Depending on what you are presenting. Okay, let's just hold that. I've got Seth on my line. Seth, many thanks for waiting. Good afternoon. Good afternoon, Martin. You're most welcome. Yeah, I want to find out if anybody can just walk in to have the test done and what's the average cost of having the test done. If anybody can walk in and f- find out if they have lupus. Exactly. Right, and the cost of the test. Yes, yes. Okay. Right, great question. Uh, 0302 Right, so can anybody just walk in and say, I listened to Note by Nature and you on Joy, and I want to check. I'm fine. I want to check my whole family. That's a double barrigan question. Right. Um, it's always difficult because, well, what we advise is that we do not order the test unless we have a clinical suspicion that you have lupus. Okay. Because um, studies showed, I mean, in America, they routinely take blood samples of their soldiers okay. over time there and use this for studies. And what it showed was that people who may be diagnosed with lupus or other autoimmune diseases may okay. actually get the antibodies way, way before the disease entity presents there. Okay. Without having any signs there. Right. So let's imagine... You have the antibodies. These antibodies you're talking about are so indicative that, that you have lupus. That you have an autoimmune process going okay, on. Okay, right. Okay, so you may have this for 10 years, 20, before the symptoms start presenting right. there. Okay. If you look at the psychological impact of having this diagnosis on you there, mm-hmm. and you have this test, you know that you have it and nothing is happening there. Right. We feel the psychological impact is okay. too much for you to be, for us to be using it as a routine screening. A regular, exactly, casual uh, Compared to other, other diseases right. there. Okay. So we don't really advocate it. But if you have a family history, mm-hmm. if you have certain symptoms, yes, then we can do that. Okay. But we don't really advise the general public that just go and do an antibody test. There. Okay. Okay. He was worried about or concerned about cost. It's just expensive. Right. Unfortunately, it's an expensive disease to have as well. On average, um, we talked about the various serological tests that mm. we do. Sometimes we even have to do biopsies of the organs to be sure about the extent sure. of its involvement. Okay. There. To be able to make a full panel of, of antibody tests, I think in Ghana currently it may cost you anything in the region of between 1,500 to 3,000 Ghana cities, depending on what you are doing. Okay. If it's just a routine test, we call it the ANA, anti, uh, anti-nuclear antibody or factor, mm. which is one of the first tests that we do to see whether you have an autoimmune process going on. That right. should cost maybe about 150 to 200 Ghana. Okay. Cities. I've got Stephen on my line somewhere in Accra. Stephen, good afternoon. Stephen, uh, Mr. Not, uh, Mr. Not, good afternoon. You're welcome, yes. And your guest. Right. I woke up into the conversation. Okay. Uh, for the past three years, I've not been sleeping well at all. It's so bad. The maximum of um, three hours is what I experience now. Okay. I don't know whether it's any effect of this antibody uh, disease you are calling locus. Uh, so I want to find out from the doctor it- what I can do. Because anytime I go to the hospital, they tell me, oh, I should stop thinking, uh, I should rest, and all that. But I've been trying to do all these things. But it doesn't go. I sometimes I try uh, sleep aid um, okay. medications, mm. and even when I start, that is when it gets worse. Okay, right. And so let me just say it's a big jump eh, from sleep difficulties, right, to what we're talking about. Okay. Yeah. And yeah. Uh, I guess uh, you need some help. Uh, maybe should I say <laughs> uh, cu- cutting down eh, your search, right? But some yeah. some detailed, uh, should I say, work up on that. Give your number to my producer, okay? okay. We'll just see okay. how we can guide you on that. But, Doc, do you have any words to say on that? Just sleep as a cardinal symptom? Sleep is, is a big feature of, uh, of autoimmune disease. Right. A lot of them have sleep disorders. There. Okay. Um, on its own, um, based on what he's saying, yeah. without other features there, I wouldn't jump mm. straight to uh, lupus as being mm. what is his problem there. But he probably needs to see... 
a sleep specialist who right. guide him with proper sleep hygiene, how to make sure he gets uh, okay. uh, good sleep, breaking right. up certain high habits okay. and stuff. Yeah. Great. St- thanks for sharing with us. Uh, 0302216541. We can take a couple more calls on uh, lupus, its treatment and its management. So you mentioned medications that target specific, specific uh, organs. organs right. Then we have... Which um, the person will have to be on... For life. For, for life. Okay. Uh, for life. It may not necessarily be always the high dose that you started with. Mm. And some Joy. people, the thing is, we said it's a chronic disease. What we are aiming for is what we call a state of remission. Okay. Where the disease is calm, the immune system is calm, and it's not misbehaving or targeting the organs. Then right. Some people are able to get on that, get to that stage. Okay. And their medications is reduced gradually to the barest minimum. Okay. Some people are able to get off it as mm. well then. Depending on the severity of the disease. Remember, if it's someone who has joint or skin involvement, it's easier to get into remission okay. than someone who has kidney or brain involvement. Okay. There. When you're playing the, 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 should I say, almost playing God, right, and fiddling with or suppressing the immune, immune system. system, wouldn't that have its own consequences or negative side effects for the for the patient? Yes, it does. Um, sometimes we are suppressing it and sometimes you may miss the mark and suppress it too much. Okay. So then remember the immune system is supposed to protect you against what infections and other foreign antigens. Mm-hmm. And it's doing the opposite of what it's supposed to do. So sometimes, yes, the disease entity, whilst you are treating it, you would um, overshoot the mm-hmm. mark and then predispose the person to infections as okay. well. There. But the immune system as it is as well, even though it's overworked and it's not working efficiently. Right. So still you are predisposed to have an infection. Okay. There. What we do is to weigh the benefits against the risks there. Okay. All if right. you have kidney involvement, infections for us is... So you may have to live with some of the, the side effects side of the effect medication. Here, just to make sure wow. that your kidneys are protected. Okay. Yes. Farouk is on my line from Tema. Farouk, good afternoon. Good afternoon, sir. You're most welcome. Share with us. Yeah, um, I'm so glad with the discussion we're having. That is very nice. Uh, my problem is uh, I have sleeping problem. My in the night, I actually have no, don't have any problem sleeping. But the problem starts when I from five o'clock in the morning. If I try to catch a sleep after five o'clock or any time in the afternoon, I get burning sensation all over the body that I can't really have a good sleep. So I actually want to know if it's part of uh, this lip lip where lupus. Lupus. Okay. Right. Okay. okay. Yeah. Well, you you sound like you get good sleep, but you want to extend it. Well, sometimes, you know, like today I'm in the house now. I try to catch up uh, sleeping this afternoon. But it's not, it's not easy. You get this burning sensation, especially in the joints. You, you can't really You'll be turning the bed. Mm. You, you, I can't really sleep well. Okay. Yeah. Right, Doc, anything you want to say? Sleep? <laughs> well, you can't really catch up on sleep. You have right. to try and get your required number right. in, in, a, in a nice day. Right. Um, Averagely, the healthy person should be getting six to seven, seven hours, hours of sleep. sleep. Yes, and so for him as well as the first um, caller, so right. I think it's probably got to do with his sleep habits. Then. Right. If he's able to get a regular cycle mm-hmm. to break that um, okay. cycle of, of sleep, he right. probably would get it right. Right. Don't start shopping for lupus, okay? <laughs> uh, we get that sometimes when we do a discussion that is good, and then people start thinking, "Ah, oh, I have that." I've got Ajiman on my line. Is it Ajiman Joseph? Yes, sir. But you, the oh, question you're asking, eh, you you went out last night, eh? No. You missed, you missed some parts, but you're asking about uh, common age groups that are afflicted by lupus, right? Yeah, yeah. Actually, I jumped into the program. I didn't, I couldn't start with you. Eh, uh, yeah. uh-huh. Right. And, uh, I'm listening. Oh, your line is breaking. Say that again. I'm talking about something to do with diet. Okay. All right. Our life, exercise, exercise, Okay. Right. So he's asking if diet has anything to do with it, and then uh, can exercise help? Um, diet, and essentially, can it be prevented? We do not have any um, direct or conclusive. Uh, things that we know can prevent it. A lot of okay. new or exciting research is coming up though. Remember the immune system is based on what we call lymph, um, the lymph system. Right. Okay, where most of the cells they are located. And a lot of it is found in the gut. Mm. Studies are showing that if that is where a lot of the lymph um, cells are located, they think that there might be some dysfunction that starts from there. Okay. And then it causes things to be able to leak into the blood vessels there. Mm. 
So things like probiotics are being advocated a lot um, now to actually help the immune system. Okay. So studies show that it might also help to try and improve outcomes early. Mm. Vitamin D, um, which you get from sunlight and, right. and other dietary sources, also helps to modulate the immune system there. So usually we'll, we'll screen for that and try and correct that as well if okay. we get it there. The anti-inflammatory foods, okay, that you may find omega-3, and six fatty acids that you get in fish okay. and olive oil is something that we advocate for our patients as well. But generally, mm. what we want is just for you to live a healthy life. Right. More fresh fruits and vegetables. Okay. Right. That is what you should incorporate in your okay. diet. Okay. So this is going to be difficult. I haven't mm -hmm. heard you mention any surgical intervention. You're not going to take out something or do anything surgical that might, uh, should I say, help or relieve symptoms? We have certain procedures that we can do because of the complications, but okay. it's not a surgical disease that you go and take a, 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 a let's say, a growth or something and cures okay. the disease. Right. If you have the fluid buildup that occurs because of the inflammation in the lungs or around the heart, you may have to go as, do a surgical in procedure to take that fluid off and relieve the okay. patient. Then you may have to do biopsies of the kidney to make a diagnosis. Right. But it's not a surgical. Uh, disease for you to just go and take a certain portion out and then that cures the disease. No. Okay. You may have to do joint replacement if it damages the joint, for example, then yes, that becomes a surgical. Um, this condition is too expensive. Yeah. Don't want it. But okay. let me ask this. So let's look at the toll on quality of life yes. for the the, the, the patient. Mm -hmm. Right. What What's the picture there? It's, it's quite bad. Um, I wish there were some of them who were here to, to tell you their experience as well. Mm. I mean, the one the team, one of the teams for this year's Lupus Awareness Month was the emotional effect of lupus and the need for emotional support. Okay. The thing about lupus is, I'm sure all the celebrities that you've talked about, if you look at them, they look pretty fine. Mm. They don't look like they are. Because they've got the cash. No, but actually even here, uh -huh. you'd be surprised at some of, 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 of my patients and the people who may have lupus there. Mm. They look okay because they are taking the medications. If right. you had seen them at diagnosis, you wouldn't think that, yes, they look very ill. People have told them they have HIV. Okay. But with proper treatment, they look well. Okay. And so if the person is telling you, I'm going through this amount of difficulty, my right. kidney is not functioning well, mm. the person comes to work and because of the fatigue, is not able to function. People don't believe them. You tend to label them as being lazy, you don't like work, mm -hmm. but the thing is that if the person over it, it ends up with more problems there. Okay. And so it's difficult for them to balance. People right. don't believe them, they are sick, they lose a lot of family functions. Once, if I go on a, an outing with my friends, that means I'm going to lose one day because I'll feel so ill the next day. So right. I might as well just not go out. Okay. And so they lose friends. I'm spending all my money on medications there, mm -hmm. when I could have been using it for my business there. Mm -hmm. So there are lots of various things there. And then the psychological impact of not knowing what is going to happen next. You right. know about the symptoms there. Yeah. I may be having joint disease today. What if tomorrow I start having seizures, especially when they know someone who's had it there. Okay. And so that psychological um, burden of not knowing what is going to happen tomorrow. Right makes it really a very difficult thing for them to handle okay. there. So it's really difficult. Right. I'll be coming back to you. I'll take Emmanuel, who's calling us from Madan, to ask you whether you would routinely partner with a psychologist or any other, should I say, a behavioral or emotional mm -hmm. mental health specialist to manage somebody with such a chronic dis uh, disease. I have, uh, rather, it's not, uh, Mami Chiriwa in Lashibi. Right. Mami? Okay. Emmanuel from Madan. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. Right. Share with us. How are you? Good afternoon. Yes, good afternoon, Emmanuel. You're on. Quickly, share with us. Uh, my mother, 63 years. Yep. Uh, about four years now, she's complaining about body itch. We we move from every place to leprosy clinic, everywhere, and then we are not getting the headway. She, the body will be itching her in such a way that she cannot even sleep. Uh, if there is any advice you, uh, your, your doctor can give us or direct us to any medical center that uh, can assist us, you know, we'll be grateful. Okay, right. Let me quickly take Mami Chirwa in Lashibi. Mami Chirwa, Chirwa, you're welcome. Good afternoon. Afternoon. How are you? I'm very well. Share with us. Hello, Mami. Hello, Mommy. Oh, I thought I could hear her in the background. Is she on? Abeku. Hello, Mommy. 
Ma Michua. Yeah, I'm yeah, here. Yeah, please share with us quickly. We only have about five minutes left. Sure. I have been living with lupus since 2012. Wow. And Doc, Doc has doing an amazing job. So I would want to <laughs> say thank you to her because she's really been of help. Since 2012? Yes. How old are you, Mami? Uh, I'm 29. I'll be 30 very soon. Wow. Can you just share with us quickly or briefly for my listeners, how has this impacted your life, despite having Dr. Day helping you? Well, um, it's changed a lot. It's changed a lot. And ever since I got to know about it, uh, lifestyle, everything has been different. How you see life is also different. And now I get to educate people on this because I realize so many people don't know about it. Right. So in my own way, I've also started creating the awareness. People don't get to understand why you do that. You know, in our part of the world, with all the superstition and what have you, you start doing this and people tell you, why are you doing that? Right. Why, are you, why are you making people aware you have this? But if you don't make people aware, how then do others who have it go to the hospital and seek medical attention? Right. So, yeah, we need to educate people. There are so many people living with it and they are not aware. So as we are all doing this, it would help. Right. Thank so you. That's what I do. Right. It's just that I think we need to let um, people know that uh, this it's, it's not deliberate. Because um, with organizations, people tend to think you are lazy and all that. Okay. But you miss a lot of work? Uh, you miss out on work? You have. Yes, yes, yes. And, yes, your, and um, your employers understand? No, they get to understand. You see, that is, that is where. So if you end up having a good boss to understand you, fine. But if you go meet a boss who doesn't understand you, it becomes very difficult. Right. Yes. Mommy, thanks for sharing with us. We had wanted some uh, of the, uh, let me call them survivors, uh, uh, with us today. It wasn't possible. So great to talk to you. Give your number to my producer offline. Eh? Sure. It'd be good to share with you. Thanks so much for sharing with us and keep uh, keep it up. Somebody you, you know? Thank you very much for sharing this. <laughs> wow. You must know all your, your, your clients uh, well, by name. I try. Not ah, all of them by name, though. Right. Okay. <laughs> Right. Uh, this is from Dede. She asked for a shout out if time will permit. Very good friends of mine lost their daughter, Mary, Marie, to lupus, and it was devastating. Marie, may the good Lord continue to grant you eternal rest. This is from Dede in Maryland. Doc, to wrap up, uh, what would you want to leave our listeners with? As uh, Mami Chua said, yeah. awareness is very important because okay. early diagnosis makes a huge difference. Okay. If we all create awareness, doctors, the general public, we all will be able to recognize the disease early. Mm. And if we are able to diagnose, diagnose you before an organ is involved, okay. then your chances of living this 95% normal life is possible. Right. It is not a spiritual disease. It's not contagious. Mm -hmm. People are not lazy. There is treatment available. Okay. One of our main challenges is people not adhering to treatment and going off to seek other forms of treatment then coming back when organs are damaged there. Okay. Yes, we know it's a difficult disease, but just like you treat your hypertension and diabetes, lupus can be managed and managed effectively if we just stick to treatments there. Okay. So raising awareness, let's all support people who have these conditions there. It is not deliberate, as uh, Mami said. Okay. It is something that they have no control over. And all of us are at risk. Okay. You don't know when your immune system can go off and right. be, go awry. Okay. So we all need to challenge, uh, right. fall into the challenge. You're a director and a founder of the rheuma uh, Rheumatoid Arthritis uh, the rheumatology Initiative. The Initiative, yes. Right. Is there a fund for things like this? There's no fund. We have to try and raise funds ourselves to our own initiative, mm. to the patients, to try and support people who have the disease. Remember I said that within six months, somebody can have um, lupus attacking the kidneys and end up on dialysis. Right. And just having some emergency treatments, steroids and stuff can make that difference and prevent the person from okay. going on to end-stage kidney disease. Right. And if people are not able to afford it at that time, you watch helplessly and end up with someone who's going to put more burden on the healthcare system. Okay. So we need so to fight fight for that. Exactly. Okay. Great. You just uh, heard wrapping up Dr. Jifa Day. She's a rheumatologist at the Kolibu Teaching Hospital. We've been talking about lupus. We hope we've uh, uh, informed and transformed you, but we'll have to fight uh, uh, for some of the supports okay. definitely needed for the impact of this devastating condition. Once again, Dr. Day, thank you. Many thanks okay. to Abeku Sankofi. Up next is uh, my man Bile with Sunday Rhythms.